Good morning all. Spot the difference. Okay, the display data are different. That's fair enough. Both of these are showing temperature, humidity and lux. So the current light level value. But there's another difference between these and that is this one has a Bluetooth logo and this one has a Zigbee logo. So they're both wireless, they just use different wireless standards. Um, they're both also CR2032 driven. There's the coin cell. And uh, having an e-ink display, of course when you take the power away, the display keeps on showing what it was showing before. So which of these two am I going to take apart? Well the Bluetooth one, because I can't actually get it to work. Not properly, anyway. I can talk to it directly from a Bluetooth device, so my tablet for example. Now from a tablet you can't talk directly to a Zigbee device because tablets don't have a Zigbee interface. Well this one doesn't. But after I bought this Bluetooth device by error really, I then followed up with this rather anonymous looking box which is a Zigbee and Bluetooth multi-mode hub. It's also Wi-Fi so it has no LAN connection, it's just literally powered by 5 volts. Now that's all hooked up to the Wi-Fi and whatnot, and it seems that the way you connect this to this multi-mode hub is you first connect it to your phone or tablet, which I've done, you then talk to the multi-mode hub and you say, take over this device. I've got all the details of it, take it over, but that process just doesn't work. I'll show you. So in the Tuya Smart app, although this is actually the Lidl version, um, I think they fixed that thing where, when you back out it said tap again to exit to your smart. <laughs> They've updated that and fixed it. So here's my device. I've called it SWE. I better tell you why I've done that. For some reason, although these are both Mose devices, smart brightness thermometer, um, one of them has under the flap Mose and the other one has SWE for whatever reason. So I'm identifying that by the SWE. So here's Julian's home, here's SWE, and it's got the little Bluetooth symbol, so it was added as a Bluetooth device. If I go into it, uh, and actually Bluetooth not on, perhaps I should turn it on because the data as it stands is not correct, but it doesn't give you a message saying, I have no connection, this data is historical, it just doesn't say that. Right, now I have a connection, all the fields are correct, and if I change the light level, and send that down to 20 lux, that immediately shows on the screen. And yes, it's following it. So it is talking to it over Bluetooth. But then what you do is you go to the hub and that is the Zigbee BLE gateway. And you add a device, but rather than add new devices, which really should say add Zigbee devices, you associate a Bluetooth device. There is my list of Bluetooth devices that I've currently got set up. So I will select that one, confirm, and then we get to this, add to device. During the adding process, please keep the device connected. During the adding process, the device will no longer be used. Please wait patiently, but this always fails. It never adds the device to the hub. So the way I see this is that you get the hub to take over the, the device that you initially set up through a direct Bluetooth connection, but it doesn't do it. It just fails every time. There it is. There seems to be no feedback from the device. Please refresh and try. And it doesn't matter how many times you do it, it doesn't work. Now another difference, interestingly, is this one came with two little screws holding it together. This one didn't, so there's nothing holding this one together, so another reason to take apart the SWE one. So let's do that now. I'm uh, using Plectra to try and get this thing apart, but it's pretty stubborn. Uh, how did I do that? I think I forced it down in there. Ah yes, that looks like it. That looks like it's coming apart. Just the top edge now. Right, there we are. So we've got a ribbon cable running to the e-ink display, which uh, is saying zero lux, probably because when I took the battery out, I had my finger over the 
LUX sensor. Let's take a look at the LUX sensor. So that's that device there. Uh, looks like a chip based sensor rather than just an LDR or something like that. Um, oh, that's very nice as seen from the rear, isn't it? There's the temperature and humidity sensor out on a little arm. And there's a hole here and there's also a hole in the back panel. Oh, it's that one there. I'll turn it around to the right orientation. And that allows airflow through the temperature and humidity sensor. And then we've got a BT3L um, microcontroller and wireless system on a chip, I presume. Little push button switch there. And there is nothing on the rear side of this board other than the luminance sensor or lux sensor. Now as for the SOC, uh, can you read that? It's a something LSR8250 F512 and all that other stuff. There's a 24 meg crystal there, but there's precious little else. There isn't a lot in here. The sensor down here, I can't read that very well. Uh, if you can on the higher res screen, and you've done better than I have. So pretty impressive stuff that this actually works for as long as it does on the power source, which is this little um, CR2032. Let's put that in and see if this thing fires back up. Yep, you get that uh, inverting from white to black and it's now obviously responding to changing light levels. Jolly good, let's put the battery cover on. So yeah, not a lot in these. Uh, everything's system on a chip, which and the chip itself is on a board with a squiggly antenna. Seems to be the way this sort of thing are going these days. So I will probably put the Zigbee one in the shed. Uh, that's the Zigbee one. The Bluetooth one, I'm not entirely sure what to do with it because uh, as I say, I can't get it to work independently of the Bluetooth on my phone or tablet. I might try, but all these things are about £20 each, they're quite expensive. But I suppose I could try an alternative brand of multi-mode uh, Zigbee and Bluetooth hub and uh, just see whether it's this one that's not uh, working in conjunction with the Bluetooth device. But I might leave that for a while, I don't know yet. Still getting peculiar things happening, even on this uh, Zigbee one. Seems to be tracking the lux value properly and the humidity, but the, the temperature hasn't updated. And funnily enough, on the graphs, the temperature went from 24.2 to zero at 11 o'clock. So has it stopped receiving temperature data from this thing? I don't know. It's very strange. I can show that the uh, lux value is tracking. If I take the lux value down, that's tracking fine, but not the temperature now. Yes, these things are just mysterious. And here's another device I bought recently, which I liked. It's not e-ink, it's LCD. It's also got uh, luminance, temperature and humidity. I liked it because it's got two double A's, so lots of battery power. But this one has never reported anything other than zero lux. Temperature and humidity come over fine. Zero lux. Strange. So there we are, more Zigbee and in this case Bluetooth uh, sensor modules with clever power management and uh, wireless modules. But they're badly behaved and they don't work properly. Cheerio.